Well, all right. What's going on, everybody? We are going to look at some art books today on this not terribly long a live stream. Um, good morning, Matt V. Trench Production and Cam. The uh, campaign for uh, Gunship Thunder Punch, if you are not following it, is over 12,000. It's going towards the 15K uh, stretch goal. And when that happens, I will include a how to draw robots tutorial. Um, this is nothing. This is just while I was sketching yesterday. All right. So we're going to go over because uh, of the, the title, we're going to go real quick and get into this uh, art books because a lot of you all have asked um, for suggestions for art books. And there's so many out there that um, kind of don't resonate with you. And it, what art book especially with anatomy actually works for you will be different than somebody else, but this is what kind of helped me. And um, so I've got a stack of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. We're going to go through um, wash hands. What is that? <clears throat> a, a L is here. Uh, spread the link around and all that stuff. So as far as anatomy books, um, this one probably was the most helpful. And this is by Jack Ham. It's drawing the head and figure. And the, I don't know when this came out. This is um, this is an older book, probably. Also, there is uh, artistic nudity in a couple of these books. You have been forewarned, by the way. 1963 is when this book came out. So this one really breaks down very easily, step by step. Different like different angles of the face. Um, different hairstyles, some of which are kind of dated now, but the anatomy is still the same. And you'll get the uh, a very good breakdown of all the anatomy, but for, for me, for some reason, this resonated, uh, I think, just how like, the change in direction of um, uh, the figure. And it's not a lot of, like, the bones are here, but I find that... Um, when you're looking for anatomy books, for me personally, when you're trying to get the basic concepts down, it was very hard to get past like all oh, the here's the bones and the muscles and everything. You need start with the basic shapes and then go into like bones and like tendons and like when you're flexing this, you see this muscle. Worry about that after you get the basic shapes down. And this is what uh, that does a really good job of doing. Even down to I know one thing that kind of stuck out was like. Um, like you got the clavicle, like, like this, right? Types of necks and shoulder lines. And somebody asked me about this recently, like how to draw uh, uh, necks and shoulders and things. But this this has like different variations, um, like different movements and just different construction. Yes, the basic ladies can. <laughs> so I highly recommend this one if you can find it. Uh, you should be able to get it on Amazon. I think that I picked this up at years ago at uh, Barnes Noble or something, but Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham, very good. All right, so kind of along the same lines, I got a, my studio is a complete mess right now, um, is, and this is a bigger, more commit, this is a bigger commitment, uh, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth by Andrew Loomis. This is uh, the book that helped me figure out how to put um, figures in perspective. And this is actually I kind of opened right up to that section. Um, how to hang things on the horizon. And Andrew Loomis was an illustrator, as you can see in some of these, uh, like uh, more detailed. Uh, he was an early 20th century uh, illustrator magazine. So when did this book come out? This book came out in a long time ago. Let's see, 1943. Um, <laughs> all those <laughs> so all those pictures are of good looking people aren't there tutorials on how to draw ugly people i think it's easier to to start with the good looking people and make them <laughs> ugly um so yeah this one has a lot of things on light like it's got photographs of how to, how to draw the head and um uh, figure in different lighting but one of the things here is and this was actually really good. The John and Mary problems. Uh, change how how um, things change. <clears throat> These are correct. 
uh, and this is like some mistakes, like, oh, John's falling because he wasn't drawn right. Or, so this also has a lot of kind of theory, not, well, yeah, I guess theory and commentary. As you see, it's it's a little more text heavy. Um, talks about line and stuff. And some of the stuff is dated just because it's telling you how to be a, a magazine illustrator. But I highly recommend the figure drawing for all it's worth. But pretty much anything by Andrew Loomis, you should go and buy it if you find it. And there's also one uh, fun with a pencil uh, and cartooning. And sometimes you can find those at Barnes and Noble, but they're all on. Um, Amazon and that one was out of print for a very long time and it, it, When I first ran across it, you, you know way you could get it was either spend like three hundred dollars or Download the PDF from a message board or something All right, this one going back in time is uh, uh, one that may not apply to you if you're doing um, If you're doing like comic very cartoony kind of stuff, but I think this is kind of interesting because back in the day Frederick DeWitt uh, in the 1600s published this. He was a map maker. And um, I think it was the 1600s. This edition is 2011. But um, 1675. But this is all very much pen and ink. And there's no commentary because you know, printing back then it was very hard to find books. Artists would go and find a copy, one of the few copies of this book, and they would just study it, like how to draw. If you want to know how to draw cross hatching, get some good cross hatching practice. Some of this stuff is pretty amazing, and then like some of the finished uh, works are pretty pretty incredible. I love some of these things here. Um, like this is a, a lot of historical. Things, a lot of biblical kind of illustrations, but all of this with the cross hatching, all these different values and stuff, you can really get in and see how it follows the form and how he did these designs and all this stuff. It's uh, I really like this one with Paul. And, um, but looking at it, even on the camera, um, is is different because, like, when I look at it on when I'm looking at it in here uh, in real life, you see all the little cross hatching. But when I look at it on the screen, what you're seeing is looks very grayed out, which is kind of what the effect is supposed to do. But anyway, if you want something a little different, figure out some cross hatching, cross hatching from another time. You look at some of the like principles that they had of early, early attempts of figuring out pers uh, a proportion and thing. So recommend that one if you're into that sort of thing. All right, now let's get into like some of the, the stuff that's helped me with what I actually do. Um, before that, let's take a quick look at some of the comments, uh, some of the notes of this cast. Uh, I will put a link to all these books in the description when I'm done here. Uh, they have books. Um, can't find that book. Can't find the Lumen. What was it called? Lumen Pictura. Um, all right, so... Spread the link out, by the way. Hit the thumbs up as you come in. Moving a little bit forward in time, of course, we've got How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Uh, the way Marvel Comics used to draw them. Not so much now. John Bushima is, um, was the artist, and Stan Lee wrote the little commentary. But if nothing else, if you just want some good John Bushima pencil drawings, there's some great stuff in here. But breaking down how how they draw, used to draw, lay out panels and, and uh, get more dynamic. If you've never seen this book, most people have seen it. If you're into comics, if you're into drawing, you've seen this book. It's been around um, forever. And uh, the further you get in it, you can get into like some more detailed like what always kind of stuck with me is like you get these uh i love these two pages here because it's like does a, a like a pretty standard but kind of not dynamic at all telling of this story and then does takes the exact same panels and just switches up the angle to make it more dynamic like I mean, especially look at this number two like like just straight on oh they're surprised but this one where iron man's like leaning forward and they're leaning back i mean that's just that's some good stuff um 
same thing here like guy with cigar but here's the angle here they're talking but here just a little thing like he's leaning in the point just mixing up some of this stuff and uh some some artists some professional artists have gotten away from that dynamic thing but anyway i draw comics the marvel way good stuff uh some loomis books are pdf now uh look i totally got one person to come in awesome uh let's see kevin fear says where are the robot anatomy books almost every comic artist i've talked to recommends the loomis books they were impossible to find when i, I was younger glad they're back yeah they are back the, where are the robot anatomy books well you know if you back gunship thunder punch on indiegogo and we hit 15k i will include the how to draw robots tutorial all right so another one it's really good uh 100 tuesday tips by grizz and norm if you're not following grizz and norm on um instagram or wherever or twitter or, or whatnot uh go follow them because every tuesday i don't know if they're still doing it but they would post like something like this like and it's very easy to follow uh, and they took all those free things that you can get all this stuff for free, but it's nice to have it in a book, which just goes to show, uh, I mean, I follow this stuff online, but always having it, the thing about online is once you see those pictures, they're gone. Like, you, you're, oh, I can always go and find them, but when they're on, it's a little different when it's on your bookshelf. But um, very simply break down how to do um, some, you know, uh, anatomy or just composition floating hands thing like draw the figure and draw the hands and then connect them um they're very bite-sized cool little tips for some of you that, that like to see feet drawn you know who you are um there's some good things here and it even goes into you know the of course there's the anatomy stuff but they've also got like uh storyboards like the difference between a beat board and a storyboard and basic storyboard rules um and then some inking and i think there's some stuff in painting here yeah i had to paint paint hair and uh, it goes into enough different things that it, no matter what kind of art you're doing there's probably something uh something in here for you so go check out the, i'm just taking 100 tuesday tips and if i think there's a second volume of this too that i missed out on um question from mr vic how do you use those books? Should I copy, follow instructions, or just look at the pictures? Your videos I find more helpful. So um, that's a good question. How do you use an anatomy book? Um, for example, something like this. I, I I use this, but I just read it over and over. You just kind of get saturated in it. I would, um, and then pick one thing. Like I would say for a day, say I'm going to work on. Okay, say I opened up to this page. I'm going to work on eyes. So every time I draw an eye, I'm going to read through this a couple of times. Maybe I'll revisit it. And then add, I'm trying to think of those things as I'm drawing. I don't necessarily copy them. Um, now, don't don't uh, downplay the value of copying because that does help. I mean, all the old masters back in the day, like part of your instruction was you had to copy a piece. And by copying things, but the point of copying something is to figure out what techniques and how the artist achieved a certain end and then use that technique in your own work. Um, but I would say just, you need to get saturated in things, spend some time just kind of taking it in and looking at it over and over time. It just kind of gets ingrained in you. Um, that, that's, that's how, um, it worked, uh, for me. <laughs> Cam, Cam sent me here for the feet. Well, you're welcome. Um, a couple more. I mean, I've got to go, actually, I'm going to get another one off a of shelf here in just a second, but these are actually pretty good uh, actually very good uh, klaus jansen's dc guide to uh, there's a coloring one too but he did the uh penciling and inking um i really like klaus jansen's inking some people don't but it kind of jives with me but we've got uh, this is the penciling one so it's got some composition things some notes a lot of good notes in here See, I, I really like these it's, i don't know some people don't like that i do but um, basic laying out pages, and, um, and he's got some anatomy things here. But the DC guide to, to th this is more like you know, angles and layouts and stuff. And then Klaus Janssen's inking book, he, he goes through different styles and different, he actually brings in other inkers too, to show just how different um, inkers handle different things. 
and there's a few like step by step how he went through okay there's the tools but back here further like he'll take a page and like say here's here's step by step there's one of like a boxing thing That's, uh, that kind of stood out i don't remember where it was but anyway um yeah these these are some pretty good uh oh here it is yeah so it's got the pencils and it's like okay he took a, a few hours like he's like this is hour one one hour i did this and then you can kind of see it as he goes along and you know how he's adding things so <clears throat> 100 tuesday tips is a hundred bucks really all right well this goes to show you it was a crowdfunded thing so um keep an eye on on uh, <laughs> any future uh it was not a hundred bucks when I, I i backed it uh, no, I didn't back it. It was for sale on their site, and it wasn't a hundred bucks. It must be out of print. Right, actually, let me go grab one more because uh, there's another good one, another good series of stuff. That if I can find it, where is it? I may have to do a different a different video for it. Oh, here they are. They're at the bottom of my shelf here. So. Most people, I think, are familiar with these, but um, the Everington Brothers, How to Think When You Draw, and How to Think When You Write. I think they've got another campaign up now. Uh, these were I got off Kickstarter, um, but these two, these are also, I think, free online. It's another one of those they release on Instagram, but these are kind of self-contained stuff. So how to think when you draw pirate ships, how to think when you draw, you know, jumps, just some principles. And this is also one of those books where you just kind of soak in and just kind of read it over and over. And there's, oh, I haven't looked at these in a while. There's some good stuff in here. Silhouettes. Um, is this volume one? This was volume one. So this is the first one. Like, here's some good stuff like smoke effects. Um, how to think when liquid pours just things some things that will add just a little bit of extra stuff to uh to your art animals and monsters characters so and then the how to think when you write is uh and look there's one on dialogue it's kind of the same thing but obviously there's more words in this because this is about about writing so i think they're up to like volume somebody told me and i missed it i think i missed it volume three or four or something so those are some really good ones. I mean, there's tons of, of books that I've looked at over the years, but those are some of the uh, some of the ones that I have I found pretty darn helpful. But I'll put the link in, in the description for all those. Um, Mike's foot drawings. And it's used. Uh, go to Grizz and Norm on Instagram. They may be able to get it a little bit cheaper there. And so with that said, I'm going to uh, spend a little time drawing now. I'll probably cut out this video and make it a self-contained video for people that um, will complain that, oh, you were talking about stuff that I didn't care about. So that ends the, the focused part of this <laughs> live stream. I'm killing two birds with one stone. And now it is time to see if maybe Elliot wants to come on. Maybe I should call Elliot. What do y'all think? Let's all call Elliot together and see what happens. Hot potatoes here. I uh, missed it by a day, said Haggis. Uh, oh, well, it's all right. Yeah, they made over a million bucks. I'm able to get Elliot and uh, he doesn't answer the phone. Answer your phone. All right. No, Elliot. Just me and you. Just me and you all. That's it. So, what should I do? You call Elliot or do you summon him? Uh, yeah. So the million bucks. So that's another thing. This is kind of a different, a different, different topic. So I really like their kind of strategy here that they just give this stuff away. This is right. 
I think they give the right ones away too. But I mean, they were posting like these little. If you, they're they're all square, right? So this isn't this is an Instagram post or a, a social media post that they just give away, and that's how they built up their their audience. All this free stuff, and then said, "Oh, you want it in a book?" And a million dollars later, no. Yeah. So, like their site, uh, cheese coffee to summon him today. Yeah, <laughs> he's lost in the ether. He doesn't answer his phone. Oh, <laughs> you did. Matt called me last night. Called me kind of late, didn't you? I gotta return your call today. You summon Elliot with a post it note on the screen. Oh, post it note. Where is it? Maybe if I leave this here long enough while I'm getting something to draw, uh, Elliot will show up. So I got I got to work on some of these. I got to start getting this wrapped up. Speaking of books you can buy, The Art of Brian Shearer, Volume 2 is available on the Gunship Thunder Punch um, campaign, as is the first book. How about that? It was 4.30 p.m. Eastern, was it? Oh, huh. where was I? <laughs> what was I doing? I might have been asleep. I was exhausted yesterday. All right, so Elliot... If I put it here, maybe he'll show up. Maybe. Maybe we'll summon him. Just over here. He's live. All right. <clears throat> I've got to sign them all. My gold pen. And draw a picture in all of them. Modelo's drooling out of his mouth. <laughs> This pencil needs to be sharpened. Look at old, old fashioned tools. A pencil sharpener. Passed out last two evenings while trying to watch My Hero Academia. I I think my, it's a combination for me this week. Um, I, I think it's allergies for one, and the allergy medicine is making me very tired. Um, I laid down yesterday after, was it yesterday afternoon? I think I slept two hours yesterday afternoon. Um, yesterday morning, I took my son fishing for the first time this season. And um, then we went to lunch. So we had a father Sunday, which was good. And then afterwards, I was just, I was exhausted. <clears throat> and on top of, um, I'm teaching at the gym four, night, four days a week now at night. Um, and uh, so, yeah. And then I had a, a, a live stream Wednesday night, uh, not here on, on somebody else's channel, that went to one in the morning, just about. So, but I recovered. Whenever you get to it, your tutorial channel should do very well. Just one more thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm gonna, I'm, I. But the good thing about that setting it up is I have a backlog. I'm just gonna have to hunker down down and bite the bullet and jump in head first and do some things that are all cliches and sayings draw Elliot in one of the books <laughs> should so who if somebody gets it like what is this most people are getting Nova Marcos by the way Nova, like drawing her hair, kind of flipping around her collar, having some weight coming in here, going up, coming around the corner, and up there. It amuses me to draw that, and so that's what you get. That's what you're getting. It. So I think we're. I don't know. Somebody go check the number on uh, the Thunder Punch campaign. I think I forgot to put the link in the description. GunshipThunderPunch.com It'll take you to Indiegogo. 
And today I'm going to have a, a secret perk for my mailing list subscribers, by the way. And uh, gunship-thunderpunch.com will take you to the mailing list. I would re recommend getting on it because only my mailing list is going to have access to the Thunder Punch acrylic standee. I think I have figured that out. So if you would like a acrylic standee of Thunder Punch, 12 298. Awesome. Thank you, Lawrence. I would uh I'll go get on the mailing list. If you're not already. I'm sending stuff out once a week. I looked at the um, comparison between the first Thunder Punch campaign and and this one because I thought, and I'm on behind. Where I, you forget exactly how how you did before. And the first day, I actually made eleven thousand on that first one. However, by this point in the campaign, I'm a I'm just about the same. Um. Very close, closer than I thought. It was a little, a little more encouraging. So, the first campaign did forty-four thousand, but by the end of the first thirty days, it was only like twenty something. Like the the first, and then I extended it thirty days, and at the end of that, it was thirty-five. And then in demand, it went up another ten. So, it was actually a three-month process. It wasn't just like that one campaign. And I keep forgetting that. It's a slow grind, everybody. Slow grind. Uh, thanks for posting the link to the campaign. I appreciate that. The acrylic standee sounds awesome. Getting closer to action figures. That's right. Um, Ed Williams also has awesome work inspiration. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm trying to um, do more stuff over on Facebook uh, with my artist page. And part of the... Um, it's a little bit easier now because I don't know if you all, some of you that may have other pages, if you have a, a any page, Elliot's not here, summon Elliot. Um, one of the things is that now you can log in as very quickly switch and use Facebook very easily as your, whatever your page is. So I'm trying to do more of that and see if that brings more people in. Um, but it's kind of frustrating to have, you know, a thousand people over there and um, not be able to get in touch with them or to have them see your stuff. Because I can see through analytics who actually just, who Facebook shares my stuff with. And, uh, oh, well. Um, I guess my trouble is I don't have other friends in the comics so hard to spread the word. Yeah. Uh, did you get a chance to talk to them about the 3D Mini? Not yet. I'm going to send an email today. I appreciate that. By the way, my chair is sinking. I figured out how to fix it, but it involves uh, like PVC pipe and clamps. <laughs> and then you can never adjust the height again. Right now I'm sitting, you, you, you can't tell. But I'm sitting at my desk like a five-year-old. Yeah. That's right, Elliot. Say his name three times. Say once more. He's going to appear. That takes money, Cam. <laughs> money that I don't want to spend. Because when I buy a new, my next chair, it's going to be the Cadillac of the Lamborghini of chairs. I'm going to be able to live in it since I pretty much live in this chair. Oh, that's so much coffee in there. That is going cold. Uh, that's, that's bad news. That's sad news. Also, today, I am packing up Patreon rewards. 
So one of the, the, the top tier, which is only $10, um, that you can back on Patreon, patreon.com slash branch here, is a, a batch of sketches. Just I just send you sketches that I have laying around, a packet. So if that's something you're into, some of which may have found their way in here. But okay, I'm going to ship those out today. Or I'm going to package them up so my wife can ship them out. A little different expression. Don't have anyone who likes comics. That's why I hang with you guys. Oh, well. <clears throat> what is the Cadillac of chairs? I don't know. I gotta find out. This is like being in high school. You have to find the people who like the stuff you, you like and then hang out with them in weird places. <laughs> well, high school in the 80s and 90s, it's all cool to be a nerd now. So, I don't know. <laughs> Lawrence VE, is that a real chair? Or is that a joke I don't get? At this point in my life, either of those is possible about, about anything, any subject. Is that a real thing or a joke I don't get? <laughs> See, you hear, hear that noise? That was my chair sinking about. It happens like a centimeter at a time. It's like, doo -doo, doo -doo. and then before I know it, my face is down on my drawing table. Alex is still one of the outcasts. OG nerd. A great plan for popularity in junior high. I just said, hey, friends, anyone want to play D&D? <laughs> Real chair, Italian designer. Very good bed and desk chair, not overrated. Invest in yourself. It's true. We're nerds before there were even nerds. I was in a weird, uh, um, my circle of friends and stuff I was in too was a very strange um, cross section because I didn't play D&D &D and, and stuff, but I mean, I drew and you know, comics and everything but I also grew up around a bunch of rednecks so like you know four by fours and camo and hunting and all that so i i, I didn't really belong anywhere <laughs> let's go fishing as soon as we finish uh as soon as i finish drawing this batman picture I will not be contained by your fecal categories. Um, it's okay to be a tough guy and like comic art. Definition of nerds needs to change. I saw a beautiful woman and said she was a nerd. When I was in high school, we would have voted her homecoming queen and not a nerd. Sorry, geek culture, that's different. <clears throat> Car seats are made to be comfortable over long periods. So I have a friend that bought a car seat. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. The piston lift is going. Yeah. Engineering stuff that I don't I don't get. When I was at Univac 1992, IMDB was one of the sites that it really? It was back then. Lowrider style. I guess it up high because my because of my desks. As a Florida man, I understand what you're saying, Brian. 
<clears throat> um, spam risk. I should have answered it. Somebody called me. Uh, I also figured out because I, I took a couple days to not sitting at the computer drawing. And part of the reason why I, I had to take a couple days just from the campaign and stuff, just to, I realized I'd not taken a mental break. Like I wasn't just reading or hanging out or just, I wasn't doing anything. I think it, the thing is you, you get so focused mentally on one task or, or you're always doing your work that your, your brain just gets tired. You got to do something else. So I took a, took a little time to do other things. And like yesterday I went fishing and I'm sitting over here in my recliner more. And I realized that my upper back that I've jacked up my, so my right side, when I'm, you know, using the mouse, I keep raising the shoulder and it's slowly jacking up my muscle. But after a few days of not being on the computer, it, it stopped hurting. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be sitting at that desk as much. Didn't fit in anywhere either, says AL. Seems like martial arts and being an artist go together. Yeah, you know, I'm running into more people that, um, artists that are doing like boxing and MMA and stuff. What's up with that? What's up with that? All right. Um, oops. Oh. Try a standing desk, says bits are fun. Save your back, keep your butt. Keep the butt from having to switch yours. Yeah, I thought about that, and I used to have a desk I could stand at, but um, I don't know how I'd work it out with the stuff I got here. I could probably do it on this one. Looked up the Panina Ferra's Eris, Eris Line X. It costs $1.5 million. <laughs> what does that do for you? I should inject, like, Captain America's Super Soldier Serum for you. On a regular basis. Anybody watching this out on Facebook, especially, please share the link, share that the video page thing, whatever. Because on Facebook, that's the only way that things are going to get out there. Because I tried to get Facebook money to do it, and they just didn't. It didn't work. I tried to give YouTube money, didn't work. So I will keep my money and rely on people. This, this may be a huge mistake. Let me do a little more on this one. Because I feel like it. Somebody's getting a little extra. A little extra love here. Who will get it? I don't know. I don't know. Could be you. You don't know. I don't know like the lottery appreciate it Ed Williams All right, there's another one. I'm over halfway done with these I think I got a huge stack teach on my feet all the time until they shut down the schools now sitting all the time the back hurts yeah yeah that's out of all the um all the things I do what just happened? I just got out of order here. Oh, no, I finished that. Okay. Um, out of all the things I do, drawing and sitting at the desk causes me more pain than anything else. Did I finish all five of those sitting here? I guess I did. Wow. 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 And open another batch. Been working from a stool for a year. It's a problem. Oh, thanks. Yikes! Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Did I just use oh, it's over here? Where's my grandpa's uh, Uncle Henry knife that I have sharpened to scalpel precision? Always keep your, your tools sharp. There, it's here, it's around there. It's just, my desk is a mess. 
mess. I am. We're back to talking about feet. <laughs> Cam says, still thinking about doing a knife show and still not doing it. It's good to have dreams. It's good to have dreams. Some some dreams that just stay dreams. And in your head, they're always successful. I don't know. How, how does YouTube feel about knives? Are, are, they are, are those videos banned in London? Is London still banned pocket knives? That uh, tweet from the mayor of London popped up in like a, a feed somewhere, like somebody quoted it or whatever. Re must have been like a, I don't remember why. That there's never any reason to carry a knife. What, really? Do you not open your mail? Do you... Oh, it's because of the gun stuff. That's why. That's why it popped up. That's why YouTube loves knives. They love anything that divides people. Uh, anyone that bends pocket knives deserves to have their government changed. And scissors. Also scissors. So just London was everywhere. In, in, it was just London, right? So not not to get into politics, but I will say one thing because you know the, all the gun stuff that Biden said in his speech. If 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 you even if you're not a gun person, let me just tell you from experience, personal firsthand experience. Because yesterday he said that you can go to a gun show and buy with no questions asked and no background check buy a weapon. That is uh, either that is a flat out lie. Go to a gun show and buy a gun and let me know what happens. Because I have done it. And it's just like buying one in the store. And, and uh, although I stay away from politics on this channel, I'm going to tell you that when a flat, I hear a flat out lie that I happen to know for a fact is a lie. Or if I'm being charitable, complete ignorance. Perhaps a combination of the both. I'm going to call you out on it. Um, Swiss Army knife I carry everywhere. Like chopsticks. Where was the uh, chopsticks? London, um, what was that in reference to? The fundamental tool of us. The London's run by the Prince John. Yikes. Uh, yeah, there is no gun show loophole. Not a thing. Absolute, complete BS. They run your information through the computer system and check you out just like they do at a store. Anyway, rant over. Rant over. I, I do one good rant every six months. That was it. You got it. <laughs> uh, Peter says the Grizz and Norm books are 110 plus on Amazon. Holy cow! Hold on. I got. I got to look up something. Here. I, I'm look. Where did I get it? I got to know. In fact, on Instagram, I haven't seen them recently. I don't, it may be either they stopped posting or the Instagram decided that I shouldn't see it. Grizz. Grizz and Norm. I'm following them. Okay. Um, Etsy shop. Okay. 
Uh, you can get it for forty-four ninety-nine. I that fifty bucks was about what I spent on it, and this is volume two on their Etsy shop. I may have to buy this, by the way. Do they have volume one? Oh wait, hang on. Let's figure out how to navigate. Okay. Um, no, don't buy it on Amazon. You can get it for forty-four dollars on on their shop, their Etsy shop. Go to Etsy and go to Grizz and Norm. Type in Grizz and Norm. You can get it for half price. Half of that. <clears throat> More than half that. Forty-four dollars. Forty-five bucks plus shipping. Um, let's do it again. There's bent import of new all folding lines. I'll carry nice and also be trouble. That's so stupid. Okay, there we go. Once I started the that, that little rant, I lost like 10 people. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Framed Ink 2. I've heard of that one. I haven't got that one. I've heard it was good. Um, well, on Amazon, William the Last... There was one of them for like $500. I mean, there's six and 600. And so, I, I mean, if y'all want to spend that much, I've got a, a stack of them that I'll sell you <laughs> for half that. <clears throat> Matt V just bought a bunch of 30 round like six band uh, that you immediately lost in a boating accident. That framed ink and it's amazing. I've tried book two. Sketch looks a little Frank Miller, the good Frank Miller, not the crap one. <laughs> Uh, Ed, am I doing any cons this year? I am. I'm doing, um, I know I'm doing Joe Fest in June. That's the only one right now I have scheduled. Um, I could have done the, uh, South Carolina Comic Con, but it's in like two weeks. I don't, I, I, I probably won't. I just don't feel like going anywhere. <laughs> Oddly enough. I think the the last year of staying home has made me made me weird, weirder than before. Uh, Van Davis just got the Grizz and Norm books from their site, or perhaps it that means it looks like Klaus Janssen. Anything in North Carolina? Um, not that I know of right now. I mean, Heroes was canceled. And uh, what else do I do? Maybe if they have like a Fayetteville show, the Fayetteville show I'll go. I don't know if they're doing that one. Um, yeah, as shows are popping back up, I mean, I'm open to doing them. Come watch this live stream of me drawing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> it's crazy. The magazine transaction for some reason took place at sea, and yet it was a tra tragic accident. I'm about to sneeze again. My allergies. There was a Comic Con Center here in Asheville. Really? I don't think I've ever done a show in Asheville. That's not too far away. I'm going to sneeze. Ah! <coughs> uh. Springtime is wonderful. It's a miracle <clears throat> of nature and beauty. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> yeah, so a lot of the show, smaller shows are popping up. This didn't work. This didn't work. Um, easier than the bigger shows. 
Look forward to Joe Fest. Joe Fest is always fun. Let's do a different, different angle here. So I'm not totally boring you all. Too late. Seems like I'm forgetting one. Forgetting a show. I don't know. I really miss Heroes. Heroes is always fun. That was kind of my... That and San Diego were my, my working vacations. Because it's, I've done them for so long. There's so many you know, traditions and places I go. And usually revolve around cigars and hanging out. But Joe Fest is in Augusta, Georgia. Not too far away. About four, well, four hour drive. Um, March here. Hold on. Let me. Yeah, HeroesCon was scheduled for uh, 2022. Yep, pollen sucks. It's it's full force right now. <clears throat> Cousin helped run a Comic Con in Florida. I have a potato sent me a link to uh, the Tala Tallahassee. Is that it? I don't know if they paid enough to make it worthwhile for many creators. Seem mostly be dealers and local folk every year. Uh, did I miss something? I did not I don't think so. Okay, I think everybody's okay. Um, I really wish that coffee would magically heat up so I could drink it again. And this doesn't seem like the same pen I was just using. It's not. I laid it over there. I have a bad habit of hanging on to pens I should throw away. Thinking maybe I'll use it for an effect or something. I never do. I'm just a clutter. I think every pin in here is dead. It's just taking up space. So, Brian, why don't you clean it up? Because I'm an idiot. That's why. That's why I'm a big old dummy. Oh, the Asheville Con, yeah. Uh, here's Con's about four and a half hours drive. And where would that, like, don't dox yourself, but what state would that be? Is that North Carolina? Oh, her hair's frizzy. I inadvertently gave her frizzy hair or windblown hair or something. Something that needs some conditioning. I drew her clavicle through her uh, coat and I don't care. It adds to the charm of the sketch. Keep telling yourself that, Ryan. It's like in anime when they draw the eyebrows and the eyes through the hair that's obviously hanging down. It's a stylistic choice. North Carolina, okay. <clears throat> Say that like Red Fox. Heat mug pad. I have a heat mug pad. I'm just afraid that I, I would leave it on all the time. And then my house will burn down. Uh, Van Davis really misses heroes. I mean, yeah, misses heroes. Never worked at the energy to try San Diego. San Diego is, um, it's, it's, it's worth going to. I mean, it's over the first time you'll be completely overwhelmed. It's like going to New York city for the first time and you'll enjoy it. Um, I think you would anyway. 
uh, I have been there long enough to where I know the secret about San Diego is even though the big stuff changes every every year depending on what the the movie du jour is, eighty percent of everything else is exact same stuff every year. Same, you know, sideshow may have new stuff, but their displays it's always that same big Hulk. It's always you know there's always that voltron or whatever somewhere there's always it's always the same stuff that over the last 15 years i just don't even see anymore and i'm looking for like small out of the way booths and things with rare art or something or art books and then uh the rest of the time i'm just like hanging out off-site downtown which the whole downtown is consumed with the show anyway uh you no know, having a cigar or something with whoever i usually hang out with up there like doug or whoever and uh, so again, that's I spend more time off-site than than on. Son's going to university out in San Diego. San Diego's beautiful. I mean, I get why people live there, weather-wise. I'm not coloring her hair in, even though it's black, because I just like the way it looks. And I get to decide. Also, my head, my chin, is right at this level. Oh, gee whiz. How did she go fish of a josh? Marchero went fishing yesterday. I caught a, uh, a, a baby um, bass and a bluegill. It's better than nothing. Um... Talking about San Diego Comic Con, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Although they are having the over Thanksgiving weekend or whatever mini something, ALC, hey, yeah, be good teaching. Don't don't hurt your back sitting while teaching over the internet's over the zooms. <clears throat> I gotta count these up. I got a stack, huge stack of these over there on my desk that I've already done. And I think I've got, there were 96 of these total. Hmm. Have not been to San Diego since the early 90s. Well, you would uh, be shocked. I mean, even I first went in um, 2005, I think, 2006. And even in between 2006 and then, well, definitely now, but even in you know, by the mid 2000 teens, it, it had changed. Like it was just exploded. If that's even possible. Cause I remember you could, you could leave the convention center, walk across the street and kind I mean, it'd still be kind of crowded, but you'd kind of be away from the show. And now it's like all of that downtown area. You just, it's, it's just, you cannot get away. Eddie Gonzalez. Oh wait, probably not recognize it. You probably would not. Uh, hey, Eddie, how's it going? Uh, nice to nephew, niece fishing Wednesday, and he's caught her first fish, a little blue girl. <clears throat> yeah, I think our problem was yesterday, because it was warm, and they should have been biting more, I would have thought, but it was pretty cloudy. There was a lot of, there, there was a creek running into the pond that was washing a lot of pollen and debris in. And it was very dark. I don't think fish could actually see the bait. Let's do a three quarters turn. We the dreaded three quarters head turn. Hope you draw some fish. <laughs> uh, what do I use for bait? I, I was using a, a little spinner bait, very very small one. 
um and i think it has a name it's like a yellow it's a yellow tail or a yellow something i can't remember the name of it used to take the bus there from rancho los quitos and hang out for the weekend i butchered the pronunciation of that took her to a comic shop first time too gave her 20 and pointed her out dollar bin she got a bunch of archie and richie rich richie rich i still got i got some richie rich books I never was much into Archie for some reason. Casper. Uncle Scrooge. Fat Albert had a Fat Albert comic book. Brian's Fish Channel. Rooster Tail. That's it, Blackwing. Thank you. It's a Rooster Tail. And it's yellow. <laughs> I like the Rooster Tail. Rooster Tail is pretty effective. If you want to get some small fish. Micro fishing. I guess that really isn't micro fishing. But... I've discovered how hard it is to find just like if you just want to find a little creek and just go exploring and see, hey, what's in what's in this this creek? Every creek that looks appealing is you can't fish it around here anyway. By order of the government, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Archie was too angsty. It sounds like a nyo or nya, depending on the bell after it. Uh, grandparents used to give me rich, rich Archie Disney comics. Yeah, I grew up. Um, uh, you're going to overlap gentlemen scoundrels. Wait, I am? What? How? 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 <clears throat> we're talking about fishing? Depending on what we're in fishing, old school, most of the time, these night crawlers, also rooster tails and shit. I, I, I grew up. Um, only uh using like minnows and worms and I, I never really as a kid or in my younger days had much success with artificial bait so i'm trying to do that more now also it's easier just to on the spur of the moment go fishing if you're just using artificial bait and it's more fun for me too i think it's at least it gives you something to do right? instead of just hanging around i mean I'll, not that i don't like the hanging around but And I caught a flounder a few years ago. It was the first time I'd really had success with an artificial bait. I was like, I'm going to do this more. Yeah, I, I always had the uh, Disney books as a kid. I never really got until middle school. I started getting Batman. After, after the 89 Batman, the only superhero book I really had was a, a Radio Shack TRS-80 WizKids Justice League <laughs> book. That was wonderfully ridiculous. Used to fish for eel in the canal by our house. Live worms this lifetime ago. Back on another continent. Eels. Nice Nova drawing. Appreciated Nighthawk. <clears throat> and my, grand, my grandma and great aunt, they'd go to every Thursday was shopping day, grocery shopping, and they'd a lot of times by me um like you know when they were the spinner rack it was just like there at checkout was, oh brian might like this and they would always buy me like uncle scrooge or something um but you know, back in the day when comics weren't impulse buy TRS-80 comic book sounds interesting. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. So the funniest thing about that book, maybe I'll do a, if I, I got to dig it up, but maybe I'll do a walkthrough of it sometime. There's a, there's a scene where Lex Luthor traps Superman in a, um, uh, like a building that he's wired with the red kryptonite, which in that story just took his powers away. And <laughs> the way Superman gets out is he's sitting there and goes, I've got to get out of here. If only I had 
And he whips his head around and goes, a phone. And he'd forgotten to take the pay phone. He locked him in a room with a pay phone. <laughs> and so he calls like Wonder Woman or the TR-80 Whiz Kids, I guess, or whoever. And so wonderful. Wonderfully ridiculous. Batman G.I. Joe Silver Surfer as a kid. And DJ Peterson's in the house. Comics for the same price as a candy bar. Yeah. Usually have a couple lines out. One of the bobber and the other trying out artificial trying on crankbaits. Yeah, I haven't used a whole lot of crankbaits. I want to use more of them. Watching these YouTube fishing channels has made me want to try different stuff. There's one guy that rides around. I think it's Creek Fishing Adventures or something. That, something to that effect. That's the guy that makes me wish one like drive around. and. So the, the most fun fishing trip I ever had really was um, smallmouth fishing in the mountains. And we would just look at a map. And I went with some guys that had done it before. And you just look at a map and say, okay, here's where this, this river crosses crosses this road we'll just park here and we'll just you know we had waders and we just hopped in the river and would fish for a while and then drive around and go that was fun didn't catch a thing but it was a blast eddie uh next convention is in june joe fest <clears throat> star wars disney flash justice league thor the spring 82 gi joe probably would not want to see the prices of comic books five bucks they're getting ready to go to 6.99 aren't they somebody somebody back me up on that i thought i heard that Pretty sure they're they're about to jump up even more, but four ninety nine for a while that seems cheap now. I mean, yeah, it does and doesn't seem cheap, but <clears throat> yeah, it's coming home. Where I apparently don't know anything. Me neither. I mean, I, I grew up just you you get your bobber and your worms, you throw them out, and you sit out there all day. Just being outside. But I've never I've never caught anything on a plastic worm. Although I've come I've come close. There was a little um there's a park here that has two ponds. Like one's up high, one's down low. And I was um last summer I was fishing out there and I thought, you know, I bet there's a little creek. There has to be a connecting thing. And I kind of walked and I found this little spot and it wasn't very wide at all, but you could see there was a few bass and a few um you know, bluegills and stuff and I, I got the plastic worm and i was trying to lure them out and lure <laughs> um but that plastic worm i could see the bass go for it it hit it but it wouldn't take it but it was just kind of interesting to see that you know what it actually does work uh brian it's brian con the con and brian's front lawn I'm gonna have this summer <laughs> because i'm already on the way yeah they're they're uh they're expensive now Belgian, Dutch, and French comic books. Still have most of them. Generally more cartoony, more fun. Yeah, I like the the French French style of uh, books. I've got a few of them. That uh, what was one of them? Um, oh, what is that? They're all in French. I don't know. Um, that's one of the things about Comic Con that you can buy those big tone, but they're like eleven by seventeen original size. Of the art was, and they're all black and white. Oh, that's good stuff. Just joined. Did I miss my sketch yet? Uh, yes, yes, you did. <clears throat> Seven bucks. Yeah, you know, once you start getting up there, you might as well um, uh, start drawing, um, start buying manga. You do some plein air urban drawing live. Could probably do that maybe sometime. That's what I did some of in. Um, in my art book, my first one. That, so this was speaking. Okay, we're on the Comic Con thing. So I took a, a first art book. I took a little watercolor. I did a little experiment, and uh, so all of this is a trip in 2015 to uh, Comic Con. So it was this little um, you know, watercolor thing, and that was like breakfast at a restaurant. I went to a cigar shop, the train with little notes, little travel sketch thing, and then uh, the floor and just drawing people, the food trucks. And then the next year, I did the whole marker thing. Just making. And, and, and as the, the day went on by Sunday, 
I'm so tired. It's all scribbles, but that's in volume one of the art of Brian Shearer, which you can get through the gunship thunder punch book two Indiegogo campaign. It's an add on. Don't miss the add ons. More people are saying they miss the add ons. I had somebody ask me, how do I get that? How do I get the add ons? And they'd already backed. I'm like, it was, it was there. It was there. Everybody's missing. Indiegogo, you need to fix this. I did tag them and say they needed to. They needed to um, fix their system. Um. Okay, I'm caught up. All right. They have still smoke cigar. Oh, they have cigar shops. Oh yeah, there there's still a cigar shop culture. Uh, in San Diego, there's three, two or three of them. There's one in Oceanside. Um, in fact, I spend more time at the cigar bar down there on uh, the, the gas lamp quarter than at the show. Transformed after this promise. All the quotes in the back. There's lots of quotes in the back of this book. My favorite, of course, being Larry Hama's quote. All legitimate quotes. Legitimate quotes from Larry Hama. Who's Brian Shearer? He said, a mere week after I spent a whole weekend with him, doing pan multiple panels with him at a convention. Hear the printer sounds. Yeah, my, my printer decided it was going to wake up and clean or something. I don't know. You know that thing printers do? Can I make a good drawing? A good sketch with loose lines? the experiment. And everything needs to be all slick. That's how you draw so well. <laughs> Heard it your printer. Brian's fax machines become self-aware. Do all my writing a cigar bar. I um some I've gotten some work done cigar board. Some of the problem is though it's very it's a very social place. So if there's a lot of talking, a lot of people around. But if you want a place where you can just go and immediately just fit in, go there. Um, do you remember the tinder box in the malls? I do remember the tinder box. That seems like a different aisle. Do you remember when you go in a restaurant and you'd say and the first thing they'd ask you is smoking or non? And there would be a smoking section and a non-smoking section in the McDonald's separated by uh, an imaginary line. When I went to a show in uh, Kentucky, maybe four years ago, I went. To, we stopped at a, a gas station restaurant thing. It must have been like a Wendy's or something. I don't know. Maybe it was just like a gas station that had like a little restaurant thing. In it. And uh, they had on the tables those little plastics ashtrays. I was like, man, it's like I went back in time. This is still a thing anywhere. And it was. batch this batch of five this will be the tenth book I've drawn on this on this live stream
Uh, let's see. Um, at the cigar bar at 11 a.m. There's no one there. Let's hit the end. Put on my headphones. Right under us. Interrupts about 2 p.m. That sounds good. I'm old enough to remember most restaurants were all smoking. No smoking came around a little later. I like the music off. Oh, can actually hear it. <clears throat> I have it more just for me, so I'm not speaking out loud into the abyss. Silence in just my own voice. Mish, yeah, miss having the cigar occasionally. Apparently, have asthma. I need to give up the coffee now. <clears throat> uh, what do you think about pan pastels? I've never really used them, so I am agnostic about pan pastels. How do you get your art style to be so cart? How, how did you get your art style to be so cartoony type of style? Those Transformers Jojo anime series type of art style. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently that's just how my brain works. It's just how I I'm, I naturally draw more cartoony. I, I tried to you know early on do the whole so highly rendered realisticish superhero comic booky thing and I always came off stiff because it just I didn't find it very fun. Looking back, I was not enjoying myself. I think it should. And we'll finish this drawing and then I'll wrap up the stream because this is the tenth book. And I've been going about an hour and fifteen minutes. <clears throat> Maybe it'll be on later. I don't know. I don't know what the day holds. Do any of us? All right. So, uh, where are we here? I kick it off cigar shop and purchase cigar. Sat down, light up cigarette. Not the cigar I took. <laughs> um. Eddie, thanks for hanging out. So um, go to, in the, the, the link is in the chat. I'll also put it in the description. I think I forgot. Um, that you should go check out gunshipthunderpunch.com. In fact, I'm going to um, play the trailer on the way out. The actual full trailer. Um, share the link around. We're about to hit 15K pretty soon, I hope. And uh, I'm going to put out the secret perk for my mailing list. For the acrylic standee and that's the only way through the mailing list that you'll be able to find the link to the um uh, acrylic standee so gunship-thunderpunch.com so on the way out let's uh oh the dog's in trouble out there getting reprimanded all right everybody enjoy the the trailer gunship thunder punch is back this second graphic novel in the series picks up where the adventure began in the first 80-page book. 
And if you missed book one, don't worry. You can get on board with books one and two in this Indiegogo campaign. Martians kidnapped her son, and Nova Marcos has one chance to get him back. Her only hope lies with an outdated transforming gunship, a convict, and a gun-toting hillbilly. More mutants, more, mutants, more, Martians, more Martians, more ships, more sci-fi. more sci-fi robot adventure. During this campaign, you can get exclusive extras like prints, trading cards, and original art. Time is limited, so get in now. But hang on, what? there's more. Yeah, there is. This book comes with an original Synthwave album. Immerse yourself in the adventure with an original soundtrack inspired by Gunship Thunder Punch. Get your quarters ready to go. That's an arcade reference. And press start on Gunship Thunder Punch.